Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about my favorite beauty tools. Now these aren't going to include brushes or sponges. These are just going to be like other sort of other tools, other things that I use really, really regularly in my makeup routine, whether it is YouTube makeup or just normal everyday makeup. I'm going to start with my most commonly used tools and that is these guys. So this is an eyelash clip that I bought off eBay a hundred years ago. It was literally a dollar with free shipping. It took probably two months to arrive because it come from China. Um, but essentially what you do with this is you take your eyelash and you pop the lash part. So this part here, the actual lashes, you pop that into the clip like so and it will hold the lashes. Then you can take your lash glue and you can apply it along the lash band and you can take this clip and you can set it down on something and allow the lash glue to set and become tacky before you apply it to your lashes. That way you're not having to hold the lash and wait and blow on it. You can go about your business, you can do something else. I usually like to apply my lash glue and do a brow and then I apply a lash and then I stick the other lash in there, put the glue on, let it set, do my other brow and then put the lash on. Now this lash clip came as like a two piece set. It basically had this little sort of half moon shape thing where you could sit the band of the lashes on the half moon thing to then pick it up. I got rid of that half moon thing completely. Like I don't need it. Don't, I don't understand it. It's completely unnecessary for me to put my lash on something and then pick it up with the tweezers uh, or the lash clip. Um, I just take the lash and put it straight in the clip and then apply my glue. So one part of this was very useless to me, but the actual clip itself, I don't even know how I lived my life before I had this thing. I love it. It's genius. You can also use this to apply the lashes if you want to. Personally, I think it's too big and bulky. Um, I've got little eyes, so, and you can see like when I get it in there, it's just, it's big. It's big and I feel like when I'm in a mirror kind of gets in the way and I can't see what I'm doing. So for that, I actually use something else. Now when my lashes are in here and the glue is set and it's ready to go on my eyes, I take these guys. These are from Model Rock Lashes and they are, they're lash tweezers. Now you can find lash tweezers like this in many places, um, but they aren't all the same as these ones. These ones have a very slight curve to their um, like tweezer edge and the edge is, it's big. So what I do is I take my tweezers and I go along the lashes and I pull them out like so and then I apply them like that. Okay, there's no lash glue on those lashes so obviously they're not going to stick to my face. However, these little tweezers make it so easy to apply the lashes. There's no sharp edges, there's no pointy edges, and the slight curve allows it to like hug your lash line, which is really nice. Another thing I love these lashes for is going in along the lash line after I've applied them and clipping the lashes. So like pushing the lash band into my natural lashes. So they're really nice and close to my natural lashes, which means I don't have a big gap between my natural lash and the false lash. The most common lash tweezers that I found look like this. Um, and I personally just don't really I don't like them. I don't like them as much as I like this. I feel like getting the angle in there is kind of awkward, whereas with this one, your hand is off to the side. It never has to get in the way of applying the lash. You don't have to have your hand in front of your face to apply them, which means you can get really close to a mirror and see exactly what you're doing. So love this type of lash tweeze. I, lash tweeze, 
Love this type of lash tweezers. I actually find that this specific design is a lot more difficult to find. Um, I haven't been able to find a pair on eBay that weren't Model Rock um, actual tweezers that were being resold on eBay. So these ones, absolute fave. One of my best investments, I think, because these aren't, they're not, you know, you're not gonna get these for two bucks off eBay. Um, I did have to buy them from Model Rock and I paid full price for them, uh, but they're just, they're so worth it for me. Since we're talking about lashes, I do have a few other things that I find really, really useful when it comes to applying lashes or doing, doing a thing with lashes. Something that recently came into my life is this guy. This is an eyelash holding case. I picked it up off of eBay. It was like, I don't know, four or five dollars. I bought two of them. There's one I keep in my bedroom, so when I take my lashes off at the end of the day, I've got somewhere to put them. And I also have one here in my filming room. But essentially what this is, is a shallow box with like an flip top lid um, and you can just seat your lashes in there. Now there's nothing in there that separates the lashes or holds the lashes. The only way that these stay in there for me is with the basically leftover glue on the lash from when I removed it. Um, but what I'll do if I want to use a lash is I'll peel it off and if there is excess glue I will remove that before I put the lash onto my eye. Um, I don't particularly like a big build up of lash glue on my lashes. It's doesn't look good. This has quickly become a favorite even though it's one of the more recent things that I've added to my sort of beauty tool stash. Um, but essentially what I found with this is all of my lashes that are currently in use, I always know where they are. I don't lose them anymore and I just have this one thing that needs to be stored away. In the past, before I got this guy, what I would do is I would keep the individual boxes that lashes came in and I would store them in there. And I would sometimes have like five or six boxes of lashes in my like everyday makeup drawer and they take up so much space. They can't easily be organized. I just find that having them all in here, it's so easy to just see the style that I want, pull them out and apply them. Um, another thing that I love about this, and this is why I bought two of them, because I don't remove my makeup in this particular room in the evening, I do it in my bedroom and I often, you know, I come in here and I do my makeup and then I go out and then I come home and I want to remove my makeup. I don't want to come in here when it's dark and rainy and cold. I want to just take my lashes off, remove my makeup and you know go about my business. So having one of these in my room means that I can take my lashes off, put them straight in here and they don't get lost. Um, in the past I might you know just sit them on my desk or sit them on top of like a candle with a lid or something and so many times I would lose a lash. Um, once I remember being in the car and seeing something sort of in my peripheral vision while I was holding the steering wheel and I literally freaked out. I thought there was a spider on me. It was a goddamn eyelash. Um, once I also found an eyelash embedded in my cat's tail. He's obviously, you know, walked over my desk, which he loves to do when I'm working. He's picked up an eyelash. It's got stuck in his tail. I don't particularly like just having my lashes floating around. Often I lose them. I definitely don't want them getting stuck in my cat's tail. Um, and I don't want them scaring me when I'm driving a car. Ever since I got these, no issues, no issues. I always know where my lashes are. Um, and yeah, they're fantastic. I think the only thing that I would have preferred to see with this is if they had like separate sort of compartments where I could put the lashes and maybe just maybe um, somewhere where I could stick a little sticker with the name of the lash, like the brand and the design on the thing, that would be so cool. But again, that is something that I could do with this. I just need to buy tiny little stickers and stick them on there. But look, it could be improved, but I do love this. I find it very useful. I have more lash things. Um, 
tweezers, lash tweezers. These are really handy for someone like me. Um, I have small eyes. Most eyelashes that I buy do not fit my eye. The band will be too long um, and they often need to be trimmed. What I particularly like to do is buy a lash that is short at either end and then long in the center so I can cut it in half and use it as a demi lash. That's like my preferred method. I don't really love wearing full bar lashes. I feel like they can take over a bit. So I prefer to go for a demi lash and I find buying like a lash that can be cut in half, it's just it's better value for me. And to do that, I really like a pair of tiny precise sharp scissors. Now you can absolutely use a standard pair of scissors for this job. I just find that with some designs, like sometimes with the way the hairs are laid out, um, big scissors can cut off some hairs that you don't want to, whereas a nice thin set like this can really get in there and trim very precisely, which is nice. For that particular job, I usually reach for these super sharp pointy tip um, scissors. These have a curved edge, not my absolute fave, but it it works, it works. Um, I also do like to use these sometimes for trimming extra long brow hairs that are like holding on for dear life and having a little growth spurt. So usually what I would do is just brush my hairs up and if I see any that are like really long or if I've sort of brushed my brows into place and one is it's having a moment and it's sort of hanging down. I can't get it to just get back up there with the rest of its hairy friends. That's when I might pull out these scissors, but I often reach for these ones for that specific job. Um, these ones have more of a rounded blunt tip. So if you are actually cutting near your eye area, there's not too many sharp edges that can hurt you. You're not gonna like scratch yourself when you're putting the uh, scissors up against your skin. Now I have used both of these for trimming brows and trimming false lashes. So do you need like a, a separate pair for each job? No, not really. I would actually just say go like the safety ones because then it is safer to use it around your eyes, but they also have the precision of trimming false eyelashes. But if you have both, they both are good for very specific purposes, but they get the job done of multiple things, if you know what I'm saying. I do have one more lash tool that I love to use. Maybe I should have called this video my favorite lash tools because I probably could have turned this into a video on its own based off what I've just talked about. Um, but this is a metal lash comb. This one is from Crown Brushes. It is the C221 Eyelash Definer. Now this is a metal eyelash comb. So often on like, um, here's one. So often on um, like brow combs, um, you'll have this sort of plastic edge as well as the, the hair edge. And you know, you use this to sort of brush through. You can absolutely use this to brush through your brows as well. I never do. Um, I used to always use these for brushing out my lashes when I got too much mascara in them. When they kind of got clumpy or they like sticking together, that's what I would use these for. However, I never really found them all that effective. It was a little bit hit and miss. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. And one day, many, many years ago, I saw these at, I think it was Salon Melbourne, um, and I bought one just to try it. And I was a little bit hesitant because these are metal teeth. They're really, really sharp. Um, and I was like, look, that could be dangerous, but I'm gonna give it a go because I'm intrigued to see if it's better than the plastic ones. It's definitely better than the plastic ones. Um, Awesome thing about this is the teeth are really, really fine. So when they get into the lashes, they separate really well. It doesn't grab chunks of lashes and like separate it in chunks. 
So after using this and falling in love with it, I loved it so much that the following year when I went to sell in Melbourne, I purchased two more of them. So I always had clean backups. I think maybe some of the downsides of this is that cleaning it can be very difficult because the teeth are very fine and the gap between them is also very fine. Um, mascara does get stuck in there. So what I do is I take a clean toothbrush um, that I purchased, just a really like cheapy cheap one. I purchased this purchased it specifically for cleaning this and I take my brush cleaner and I just you know get in there with the toothbrush um, that cleans it really well which is great gets off all the built up mascara and all that stuff another downside is that these are really really sharp so if you are going in to the base of your eyelashes and pulling out clumps of mascara or combing out clumps of mascara this is the type of tool you've really got to take your time with it. You've got to be careful. You can't be just brushing this through your eyelashes willy-nilly. You've got to be really careful with it because you can totally stab yourself in the eye with this and it would hurt like a motherfucking bitch. I'm like... You could probably send yourself blind if you weren't careful with this. This could potentially be dangerous. So if you really, like, if, you, if you're the type of person when you put mascara on, if you blink a lot or you, you know, um, if you sort of jerk away if something's put too close to your eye, I would absolutely 100% say don't ever, ever, ever even go there with this thing. But if you are very confident with using things around your eyes and getting mascara wands right at the base of your lashes, then you would probably be safe enough using this. Moving away from lashes, finally, um, I'm going to talk about some of the like oldest tools that I've had in my stash. Um, this is a mixing palette and this is a palette knife. So this goes back to my days of training, learning about makeup application and makeup artistry. Everything was done on a palette. Everything was depotted in, onto a palette. You would do all of your mixing on here and you would use your spatula to depot apply to the palette, mix if necessary, and then you would apply from the palette onto the client's face. Um, now you can absolutely do this with the back of your hand, with a plate, with anything. Um, I think just based off like the way I, I learned makeup, how I was trained, this has just stuck with me for years. Um, I love mixing like foundations to get my perfect shade. I like mixing lip colors. I like mixing like cream eyeshadow products. This is definitely not something that is necessary for, you know, your general consumer. Um, people would maybe have an interest in this, buy it thinking that they might use it a lot and then after a couple of uses be like this is not something necessary for me but if I'm going to do a video on my favorite beauty tools I have to talk about these because they have been in my life for a very long time. These I actually got these in 2012 and I think I'll keep them forever. They almost have nostalgic value for me. Um, now mine I picked up at a pro makeup store but you can find these anywhere if you do feel like this is something that you would like to bring into your routine. The spatulas you can find them on eBay, the palettes you can find them on eBay. You can go really really fancy and get luxe ones from high-end brands if you want. You can find them from really affordable brands. You can probably pick them up for a dollar with free shipping off eBay but I do love these and I think if you are if you're the type of person who likes to, um, you know, do a lot of mixing of products like I do, you might find these helpful. The times of year that these really, really play a big part in my life are when I'm between seasons and say I'm not at my fairest anymore, so my fair, like standard foundations aren't quite right for me but I'm also not as tanned as my tan foundation so then I might be doing a lot of mixing and I like to do it on here so that I don't have the shit all over my hand. Um, another time that these are very very heavily used is actually when I'm sick so like right now. Um, I don't like to apply makeup 
um, directly to my skin from tubes if I can avoid it. Lipsticks I don't worry too much about because they can be scraped off and sanitized. Pencils, they can be sharpened, things like that. But when it comes to like you know, if I'm mixing a foundation on the back of my hand to get the right shade, I feel a little bit uncomfortable because my immune system is not, like it's working over time, it's not coping so well. I don't know what germs I've got on my hands. I don't know, you know, it's just, I guess that comes down to like habit of when I was training, um, you're always taught about hygiene and how to avoid spreading germs. So it was sort of ingrained in us to use things like this. They can be easily sterilized between clients. Um, your products never have to come in contact with anyone, whether they're sick or not. It was just, you know, the, there are illnesses. People can be sick and not have symptoms. Um, so I guess it, it all comes back to that. Even to this day, when I'm doing makeup only on myself. I don't even work with clients anymore. Um, I'm always thinking about hygiene. You know, what, how am I going to taint this? How am I potentially going to make myself sick in the future with this product? It's a funny thing and you know, I don't, um, I don't worry about it, but it's always in the back of my mind. I'm always thinking about making sure that I'm being hygienic. So these babies are my hygiene faves. I do love these. Um, and like I said, I've had them for years and I think I will hold on to them forever. Another type of spatula that I really, really love is this guy. This is the Every Drop Makeup Spatula. So this is the original one. Um, I think they've changed it slightly and I know they've brought out like a, a smaller one for um, like getting into concealers and stuff. I have that. I do not like that as much as I like this guy. This is literally like an itty bitty kitchen spatula. It's so good for getting into foundation bottles if you wanna get like the last little bit. It's great if you wanna like cut open the top of like a squeezy tube and then scoop into it and get excess product out that you can't get out by squeezing it. I love this little thing. I know there are heaps of dupes on the market so you don't have to spend the money that every drop um, charges for this. Although when I bought it, I'm sure it was like under $10. And for me, I was like, that's a bargain. Um, and I love this. I've had it again for years and I use it very, very regularly. Great little tool. All right. I think the last thing that I want to talk about, can you guys hear that like high pitched screeching in the background? I really hope you can't. It is someone's uh, like water pipes like they've turned on a tap having a shower and it's screeching it's really annoying me uh, anyway last thing I want to talk about is these guys these are baby cotton buds and I buy these at Daiso so you get them in a little tub like this it comes in a pack of 200 they're two dollars eighty um, now, the reason I like these ones compared to a standard size cotton bud, and these are about half the size, um, not half the size this way, but half the size this way of a standard cotton bud. The reason I like these ones is because they offer precision for makeup touch-ups. So if I uh, apply mascara and I get it, you know, on my eyeshadow, or if I like, if my mascara is wet and I blink too hard and I get it all under here, I allow the mascara to dry and then I take this little guy and I just like twist it over the dried mascara and it just flakes it off without disturbing the eyeshadow underneath. These are also great for cleaning in the very inner corner of the eye. You know how sometimes like you get gunk in there? You can get it in there, clean it out, and it's so small that it doesn't like, it doesn't get in your vision. It doesn't feel like you're sticking something gigantic in your eyeball. It's great. I love these things. I also think they're really nice for tidying up if you get any like excess brow product where you shouldn't have got it. Instead of going in with like your finger, which is huge in comparison to this guy, I like to go in with the Q-tip and just really gently like brush away any product that 
you know, I've gone outside the lines. I've colored outside of the brow lines. I want to tidy it up. I use one of these. So I love these for like precision makeup cleaning jobs. Another thing I love this for, if you are the type of person who wears really, really long wear like gel pencils or gel liners um, along your waterline or in your tight line. And when you wash your face in the evening, you got like the panda eyes because you can't get the long wear liner off your waterline or your tight line. I like to go in with these and I literally use this like I would use a pencil to apply the um like the gel liner you go in you sweep it across you sweep it up the top it takes away the product and it's not so big that you've got this giant q-tip look q-tips aren't giant but in comparison to this they're giant um, it's not going to be like scraping across your eye you're not going to be um you know hurting yourself or you know jerking around because you've just poked yourself in the eye they're really nice and small they offer precision i love stuff that offers precision all right guys so i think i'm going to wrap that up there the screeching taps and my neighbors are doing other things there's noise it's annoying me i don't like it when i'm trying to work um so i'm gonna go i'm gonna wrap it up i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any favorite beauty tools that are not like brushes or sponges or anything like that sort of like the stuff that you saw in this video or if you have any like tips or tricks like for me um like the spatula and the um, the palette, the makeup palette. If you don't have a spatula, but you have purchased um, a skincare product that has these tiny little like scoops to get them out of the pots, they can be really good as well for mixing products together. And you, like I said, you can use a plate um, to mix your makeup on. Just make sure it's clean, give it a sanitize with some alcohol and off you go. So there are like little things you can do where you don't have to buy specific tools for it. But I love my tools that are like purposely built for those jobs. But if you have any like tips or tricks, let me know what they are down in the comments. Um, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Did I say that? I don't know. I think I'm losing the plot. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.